Stock, finish, traditions, 32 caliber Crockett's World Rifle Kit. William Hovey Smith, 2013. I'm the author of Extreme Muzzleloading and also a new book on building and restoring old muzzleloading guns. This is Hopi Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, and we are continuing to build our Crockett 32 caliber squirrel rifle kit gun on the kitchen table. Yep. And where we are right now is we are about to work, start work on the stock. The stock has some very nicely finished and polished brass work. So this, we do not want to scrape or hurt or in any way mar with the sanding and whatever else we're going to do with the stock. So this is going to come off and we're going to choose a nice appropriately sized screwdriver for that. Okay, that should be about right. And very carefully turn out the screws. You don't want to mar the heads because this disfigures the whole work if you do. And you certainly don't want to have to call back to traditions and say, Ah, I need two more screws! And which they'll charge you about $12 for. So, alright, you don't want to do that. Okay, there's one. Two. Now this piece is loosening nicely, so that's good. All right, excellent. The polishing work on this brass is quite good, and so I don't want to have to do it again. And now we take this plate off. Smaller wood screw. So we have two different sizes of wood screws here. Okay, that removes this plate. I actually had to file a little bit off this, and that's why this is scarred and scratched up. But it's certainly what I want to avoid with the rest. Now on the other end of the stock, as you see here, there is a bit of wood that sticks out quite proud over the metal. Well, I'm going to work on that a little bit with a rasp, and we're going to see if we can do a little better than that. And now we'll work on these pieces. screws here. These are the only brass screws on the whole gun. It may seem that all I'm doing with this gun is taking and replacing screws. <laughs> There's a lot of that, you know. Okay. So that just slides off quite nicely. This should just lift out now. There we go. Very nicely inlet. Now, what we have. This part right here is extremely delicate. You really have to guard this to keep it from falling over and breaking, which you certainly do not want to do. Okay, I think I'll get more control this way.
a few more strokes. share of that. Okay. Uh, ugh, I lied to you. Nice. Well, we have some two more, actually. Brass screws. They're on these plates. And these are tiny little things. Same size as the others though. That's good. Another. Okay. Well. Now. They really did do a good job on finishing the exterior of this stock. I mean, that is pretty good. That's pretty smooth. So I wouldn't put anything on there uh, any coarser than, oh, 100 grit sandpaper. I mean, this is, this is pretty good as it is. It just has a few little blemishes like here and here and here. They just need to be sanded down and preparation to put actually the first coat of stain on it. But actually the stock is in wonderful shape just like it is. So you don't want to spoil that by using something that's too coarse. Let's see here. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, 100 grit's fine. But you want to have your surfaces uniformly sanded so that it takes the oil and the stain uniformly. If you do not, then you wind up with a splotchy finish, which you of course do not want. And since the wood to metal fit is so good here, you certainly don't want to remove any serious wood. That is ready for stain right now. So we're going to go ahead and put a coat of stain on it because this will take several hours before we can put on another coat or actually start with oil finish. So uh, we're ready to stain now. So I'm going to clear out this table and we'll proceed to stain. I'm wiping off just the excess sand and dust here. Although this stain does not really have too much adhesive power. If you leave dust on it, it will sort of stick. So uh, the more dust you can wipe off, the better. Now this is just a little piece of uh, cotton t-shirt material, but you want something that's cotton to daub with rather than anything that has synthetics in it just because cotton is a better absorbent and makes a better applicator. All right, Let's see how we're doing here. Now 80% of the color of the stock is derived from this stain. So if you want it dark, you need to keep staining until you get it dark. The oil finish 
will provide a little more darkening, but not much. Really, they did a great job on this stock. There's not a split in it, which is difficult. Maple is a, well, it's a worse wood to work than walnut. You know, maple tends to split easier. It's a little more brittle. It will crack if you drop it. Because to get a stock in this condition, if you were starting with a bare piece of wood, wow. <laughs> For me, you'd be talking probably two weeks' work to get it just this far. Hmm. Here's somebody out there, well, isn't this stain in your fingers? Of course it is. No big deal. No wear off in a week or so. But this is starting to look about where we need to let it dry. And then we'll do a very light sanding with steel wool, actually. And put on another coat. But that's about good for this stage. Now, we're at the place where we have the stock stained and we're about to put our first of six coats of oil on. Now, this is where you actually let the piece rest between applications. Uh, after the stain was put on, the stock was allowed to dry overnight. So now we're just going to steal it down with some steel wool, just lightly. Uh, maple is not too bad about putting up a hairy grain Walnut is worse, so there's not too much to take off here, but you do just want to wipe it down a little bit to take any fuzz off the stock. All right, and not much is coming off as, as it should be. All right. Okay, now that's starting to look like a decent piece of wood here. It is maple, but you can see the grain coming up, and it's looking pretty attractive. So, again, just remove any wood dust. All right, now, and we're using Birchwood Casey's Oil Stain. Uh, you could be using Tongue Oil uh, or any number of other products, but I like the birchwood casing materials. It's available from Brownells and many other sources. There we go. Shook it up good. cloth to actually wick some of it up. There we go. Fill on the cloth. Yeah. Yeah, that's feeling better. I also want to seal these little back surfaces here too. You're at it. All right. And around the lock plate. Oh, by the way, uh, you've got a really huge stock. Uh, one set, uh, one bottle of stain will probably stain four or five guns and one bottle of oil will finish at least two. And it does have a little smell to it. It's not bad, but it has some smell to it. Now get your hands sticky. All right. 
Yeah, no big deal. All right, well, I'm just going to sit here and rub on this for about the next five or ten minutes. But this is what a start looks like. And you just continue with it. And you get it coated inside and out, gluing the barrel channel and the interior works. And then you just hang it up with a coat hanger like this. Right here through a hole. Okay. And just let it hang and dry in the air. And it'll be in good shape tomorrow morning. And you come up and you put another application on before you go to work. But we have completed our refinishing of the Crockett rifle. You will remember that this is what it is supposed to look like. Well, this is what it does look like. But actually, this is a better grade of wood on the gun than it's actually shown on the photo. So what did we do? Well, uh, we've now got several coats of oil on it. We also have a coat of furniture wax on it. And we did a little polishing here to get rid of some blemishes on the brass. We got rid of that with steel wool. We also, as you may recall, had problems with the set trigger. Well, we solved that by putting an extension on the sear bar and increasing its contact depth. So, okay, now we set the trigger. All right. And we touch the first one and it drops a hammer. Now, that's how that exactly is supposed to work. So, we've completed that. So, the next step is going to be to actually finish the bright metal barrel. But now, this is Hobie Smith. Reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Among my outdoor titles are extreme muzzleloading, backyard deer hunting, crossbow hunting, and practical bow fishing, and all of these are available as ebooks. Now, the muzzleloading series will be out in 2013 as we'll be building or restoring your own muzzleloader. Now, thus far, we have about three days in this project and eight hours of hand-on work. For more information on my books, blogs, videos, go to my website at www.hovysmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.